this is Doug Green Cabby, and today we're going to be walking you through an inexpensive aquaponics setup so that you can provide food through fish, also through greens for your family without ever having to clean a fish tank or without ever having to fertilize your plant. concept. They're using it in countries all over the world. They're using it in the hood. They're using it in the suburbs. They're using it everywhere in the country that you can think about. And the great thing about this, this is upcycling. These are barrels from an old car wash that a fish soaked in here. These have been well cleaned out, but you see how worn they are. We were able to pick these guys up for $2 a piece from our local car wash. You can also find them free on Craigslist uh, all over the place. So we're going to take a two barrel system here, and uh, we also found some free lumber on uh, Craigslist. Now the great thing is Craigslist has a free or a barter section that has free stuff all the time. They have almost anything you can think of for free. And uh, so we picked up a bunch of free lumber. We're going to go ahead and show you how to quickly and easily convert this into a food producing unit for about 40 bucks. You can produce 50 to 100 pounds of fish a year for your family, plus you can produce lots of fruit and vegetables through aquaponics growing. So first of all, in your fish tank you are going to need a pump so that you can pump your water up to your grow bed. Now this one here is a Ponix pump 4006. It's a uh, 400 gallon per hour pump. Uh, we got this on Amazon. This was the most uh, expensive part that we had. We got it for $26 on Amazon.com. Then you're going to need some one inch and three quarter inch pipe. The SKU numbers for all of this in the box below. Uh, we picked this stuff up at uh, Home Depot and for about six bucks uh, we're able to pick up all the piping and connections that we need to make this wonderful food producing opportunity for our family. The tools that you will need is you will need a standard drill that you plug in and you will also need a little jigsaw that we're going to cut out uh, some of the pieces of the barrel. You will also need two hole saws. The two hole saws that you're going to need are a one and a quarter hole saw and a one and three quarter hole saw. Like I said, we're going to have the SKU numbers in the box below so you can just run to your local Home Depot and pick them up. We've got the one inch uniseals and we also have some three quarter inch uniseals. We're going to show you how it hooks up to the system quick and easy and it gives you the ability to grow the system so that you can have more barrels, you can add a filter, or you can add a sump tank later on if you choose. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go ahead and cut our first barrel in half and if you see on the top there will be two bung holes. So what you will do is you will just cut along the seam of the barrel and this is where it was actually heat sealed together. So we're just going to take our jigsaw and we're going to cut along the seam so we have two growing beds out of one barrel. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and take our jigsaw and we're going to cut along the seam of the barrel so that we have two equal halves. Okay, so we got the first half cut. Now we're just going to flip it over and we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So we have it cut in two. We're going to go to the top and get the last part of it done. Super quick and easy. Okay, so now we have it, as you see, we have two grow beds. Now what we're going to do is we're going to mount these to a wooden frame and uh, we'll have all the dimensions in the box below. In one corner we're going to have bell siphons so that when the water fills up, the bell siphon action will actually suck it back down and put it back into the fish tank after it's already nourished the plants that are inside. So that's the first step. Let's go on to the next one. All right, now that we have the uh, two grow beds cut, uh, we're going to have an upright barrel. This is going to be our fish tank. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut half of this barrel open so that we have an access hatch to be able to get the fish and to be able to feed the fish and all that kind of good stuff. So this is going to be all a giant fish tank and then here at the top we'll be able to take our uh, fish uh, net and be able to pull them out or be able to tend to them or feed them or anything that we want to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our drill. We're going to drill a hole in here and then we're going to take our saw and cut out half of the top of the barrel. Alright, we got a little notch in there ready to go so we're going to go ahead and cut it out.
we got a good access point to be able to access the fish. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and clean this up with the file, file down the edges so that we can clean it out and be ready to insert water and fish. <laughs> back now and we're going to be creating our frame for our two barrels on top for the grow beds. And then what we're going to do is we're going to connect that frame to a base that will be resting over our wonderful fish tank here. So we have our, our post here that we're going to raise it over our fish tank so that we have the ability to have the fish below pump up the water into the grow beds and it will be ready to go. With the two barrels, uh, we've got our long board at 70 inches. And then we're going to cap them off at the end with 27 inches. And that's going to give us the ability to mount them to the sides and mount them to the front. Now, if you want to have a center pylon, you're probably going to want to do about 71 and a half on the long boards so that you have a center pylon. But we're just going to go ahead and drill these together with screws so that they're held in the center on all sides and they're going to be uh, raised above. Into the frame, we're putting two and a half inch wood screws. Okay, so we got one side done, now we're going to flip it over and do the other side. Alright, as you see here, we used uh, some boards to prop up our frame so that we can mount uh, screws into the grow bed. We're going to put one inch screws uh, along the edges as well as one inch screws across to each other. So we'll have a little bit of cohesion here, but it's all going to be about the three sides of stability. All right, there we have it. We have it connected with uh, our top frame. Now what we're going to do is we're going to connect the upright frame so that we can have our fish barrel underneath and we can set up our plumbing. All right, so now we're going to uh, start attaching the vertical frame to this frame here so that we'll have the grow bed raised up to the ground so that we can have the fish tank underneath and the water pumps up with our pump. Now right here on our framing, we're using two by sixes because we were able to get them free off of Craigslist. So we're gonna use two by sixes. You can also use two by fours, four by fours, whatever you wanna use. All right, we got one leg. We're gonna go ahead and do the rest and show you the finished product. All right, so we have our four uprights done. Now we're gonna go ahead and put cross braces in between so that they have the ability to keep them nice and sturdy so they don't wobble, so they don't fall because they're going to be holding a lot of weight. All right, we've braced up the edges so that we go ahead and screw it in straight. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and test the cross beams and we'll be ready to install our plumbing and bottom fish tank. All right, once again, we have our clamps on so that we can go ahead and rest our board and go ahead and apply it into where it needs to go. All right, we've got the bottom frame uh, connected, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip it over and show you what it looks like with the fish tank underneath and the frame in place. So what we have here is our setup. We're going to have our grow beds on top and it is a little bit taller but I am a taller person so I wanted to be able to have enough clearance to be able to have my piping and to later on install a uh, sump tank as well as a filter. So this is going to be our basic setup. We'll have the pump that runs up here with the plumbing to distribute our water and then uh, the water after the bell siphon comes through will feed back into the fish tank. Next what we're going to do is we're going to find uh, our bottom spot of the barrel and we're going to use a pen. We're going to let it roll and what it's going to do is it's going to find the absolute bottom of the barrel so that when the water is draining out through your uniseal and we're going to be using a one inch uniseal and to do the one inch uniseal you're going to need uh, one and three quarters or 1.75 hole saw to go ahead and drill that. So once it reaches the bottom, what we're going to do is we're going to mark where the bottom is so that we know where we're going to drill when we're putting in our uniseal. We're going to take our hole saw and we're going to go ahead and drill the spot in here so that we can start putting the bell siphon and the plumbing to go back down to the fish tank.
So we have our first hole drilled here, right there. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that the hole is clean. And if you see here, it's got a nice, nice clean edge. So what you're going to do is you're going to slide in your uniseal. And when you put in the pipe, it's going to expand so it gives you a watertight seal, which is very nice. So this makes it quick and easy to plumb, and you don't have any leaks with your aquaponics. Quick and easy. And as you see, it takes out the little piece right there, makes it a nice clean cut. And what we're using is we're using the Milwaukee hole saw. We've seen some of the other videos where some people use some of the Harbor Freight hole saw. It leaves a real rough cut, rough edge. So we just wanted to show you that. All right, here's the underside view of the Uniseal. And then, uh, what is, like I said, what it'll do is it'll expand as soon as we slide that pipe down in there uh, so that you will not have any kind of water leakage. What you want to do when you're working with your pipe is when you are working with your bell siphon, that your uh, bell siphon pipe goes at least an inch below where the gravel is going to be so that you don't have any pooling water on the top, which will grow algae and uh, it'll also allow mosquitoes to pool. So you just want to make sure that your pipe is sitting at least an inch below so that it has the ability to drain, but you're not getting any standing pooled water on the top. All right, we got it right where we want it. Now the great thing about this is now that we have our standpipe ready to go, we actually have the ability to start plumbing and putting this stuff where it needs to go. So right on the bottom, we're going to put a 90 degree elbow to make sure that we can start that siphon. All right, you got your 90 degree elbow, and then you'll run your stuff off of that so that you can dump it right back into the tank. So we're going to go ahead and put in the other standpipe, and we'll be right back. All right, now we're going to make some of our basic connections. We got our 90 degree angles in the one inch. And so basically what we're going to do, we're just going to dry fit our connections, make sure that it's a snug, tight fit right there. We've got our 90 degree, which we're going to run our pipe this way. we also got our 90 degree, where we're going to run it right back into our fish tank, which is quick and easy. We're just going to plug in our pipe here, find out where we need to run this. Right about there. your other 90 degree angle there. So you run it down so that it runs right in to your fish tank. We're going to go ahead and run our plumbing the other way so that we can also run it into our fish tank. Once again, we're going to dry fit it. All right, so now, as you see, we have our pipe coming down at our 90 degree angle, coming back down at our 90. Same thing with this one here, coming down at our 90 degree angle, going right back down into our fish tank down there on the bottom. All right, so next we're gonna go ahead and put our 400 gallon an hour pump inside our fish tank. And so to connect your pump to your PVC, what you're gonna take is you're going to take a one half male by three quarter PVC adapter, and it's actually gonna screw right in there. It's going to screw just right in there. So what you do is, when you're done with that, make sure that it's fingertip tight. You can actually run your PVC right in your pump, straight up, so that it's going to provide your water up top. Very, very nice, quick, simple, and easy. You don't need all kinds of crazy connectors to do it. All right, so once you got your PVC running up, you're going to go ahead and put your T on there. Put your T on top, just like so. And what you're going to do is you're going to run your two sets of uh, water going each way. All right, so we went ahead and connected it in our barrel. We drilled a hole in the top so that we could get the cord and the pipe through the top of the barrel so that in the front you can access the fish here. We have our downspouts that are going in the fish tank. And then what we have is we've got our PVC pipe here and this is allowing us to put the water in there and you can actually adjust uh, the 90 degree elbow up or down to adjust the flow rate so that uh, you can have them draining at opposite times. Now, what we're going to be working on is we're going to be working on the bell siphons. And so we're going to go ahead and show you how to do that. But now you have, out of one barrel, you have your water coming up. It's going to be filtering into the beds. It's going to filter through the beds and use the solids and the nitrates to actually fertilize the plants so that they can grow up super tall and wonderful. To create your siphon, what you need 
You're going to have your pipe with a cap on the end, and what you're going to do is you're going to cut some holes in it, like so, so the water can flow through, and it, this will give you the ability to create suction. We went ahead and uh, cut our standpipe a little bit, and we put a bigger hole at the bottom because the slits were actually getting debris caught in them. I know you probably won't have too much of a problem when you have rocks in there, but we just want to make sure it doesn't get clogged up. What it's going to do, the water's going to come in, it's going to raise up, and as it pushes the air bubble, it's going to come up, and it's going to actually start sucking from the bottom inside. Your water is going to stop wherever the last slit is, okay? So if you have your slits way up here at the top, then you're going to have standing water always this deep. So you don't want to do it too high, but you want to have just enough so that it creates a suction and puts your water down through the grow bed. It's siphoning all the way down here, so we're doing good on that. And you see here we got the continuous siphon.